We finally got our bank account open. So in this video, we're gonna to talk to you about what we did and what we needed to get that bank account open and what you need to do. Hello expats and travelers alike. Welcome to Expats Everywhere, the channel that is dedicated to giving you guys the information about moving abroad and traveling around the world. Let's get started. A couple different ways that you can get a bank account. Now, if you're in the US, a requirement now is that you have to have your NIF and your bank account before you get your visa. It's one of the requirements. So we didn't have to do that. That's a change. Hopefully, after all this COVID stuff is finished, it'll go back to how it was before, which was much easier. There's two ways to do this. You can do it the easy way or the cheap way. And the thing is, is we can do the cheap way because we're here, but unfortunately in the States, you're gonna have to pay someone to help you out with this. So you'll have to get a lawyer or a relocation company to help you open this and you probably have to give the same things to them for them to process it. All right guys, so let's break this down into some steps. We're gonna go step by step right here. We're gonna tell you guys how to do it and then also give you the story about how it happened for us because we did get rejected by a bank. Step one is you go into the bank and you tell them that you've just moved here, you need a bank account, and you definitely need it before your CEF immigration appointment. So for step two, what you're going to need to do is you're gonna to need to show proof of things. You need to show your passport, your NIF, your housing contract, your work contract, and pay stubs. They're gonna ask you for all this stuff. Now you can email this stuff in or go ahead and print it out and then show it. You'll probably have to photocopy it, but that's step two. Step three, after you give them all of your documents, they have to approve it. So they have other people take a look at it and then they have you wait and they contact you when they're ready to have you come back and sign for the account. This step will probably take about a couple of days unless they need more information from you. Step four, this is probably the longest part of the process, which is actually going in and signing the documents. It took us a little over an hour, so it was a lot of signing. Nowadays, a lot of things are e-signed. So even though you're physically there, you're actually signing like an iPad. So you're not having to put pen to paper, or at least we didn't. Maybe you'll have to, but that's step number four. Step five and the final step is you have to wait for your debit card to be mailed to you. Having a bank account is an SCF requirement, so you need that and your NIFs. Now, pre-COVID, it was much easier. However, if you're in the US, you need to get these two things just to get your visa now. That wasn't the case for us. So you might need to hire a lawyer or a relocation company to help you with this before you move. All right, so let's talk about how it all went down for us. Join us. All right, so we're back here up on our balcony. As you guys can see, it's a nice sunny day here in Porto. Let's talk a bit about what happened to us. Now, first thing was we went into a Santander bank and the reason that we really wanted to bank with Santander is because they're really all over. I mean, we've seen Santander banks all over Europe and we've also seen them in the US. So we thought, you know what? It might be a really good bank to be with while we're trying to move money around from the US to Europe and then whenever we travel. The reality of it is, Santander was gonna require a lot more than what we could give because our work situation is a little, mm, how should I put it, atypical. So we don't really have traditional contracts in the US. I don't know about you guys either, but I think that the Portuguese, they are used to seeing some sort of like actual contract that a company gives you with certain deadlines on it. So uh, maybe the contract's not so open-ended like it is in the States when you first sign on with the company, you'll sign a contract, but then it's just like, okay, this is our employment. It's not a contract for a year, but it's a contract kind of indefinitely. Well, they didn't really like the fact that I didn't have any sort of contract like that. My contract, the most recent one that I had was a bit old. So then I tried to say, hey, look, I've got small businesses, yada, da, 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 da. Uh, I'm self-employed, they didn't buy any of that. So they were gonna allow Kaylee to get her bank account but it seemed like it was gonna be a lot more hassle than what it was worth. So we basically put our heads down, we tucked our tails, and we quit. <laughs> now, of course we didn't quit, but we did leave there and we went to a bank that was nearby that we actually see a lot of these branches everywhere. It's Millennium Bank. It's definitely all around Porto. I'm pretty sure it's all around Lisbon as well. They have a ton of branches all over Portugal, so we went to Millennium Bank and we met up with a guy who was able to help us out a ton. Let's talk about him. 
We pop into Millennium Bank and we explain to them the situation. We met with a guy named Huey Diaz. Thanks, Huey. He hooked us up. He was able to help us with what we needed. So we gave him the documents that we talked about in the steps before. And he said he's going to give them to his colleagues. They have to take a look at it. They have to vet everything. And they would contact us. So we gave our email address and our phone number. And he called us later that day, actually asking for a couple more things. And then he said a few days later, great, we're good to go. You can come in and you can sign for your bank account so the whole process didn't take too long it was around a holiday so that kind of slowed things down but once we gave them the documents they were able to take a look at it they contacted us and they said okay come back in and you can sign everything now that took quite a while actually signing everything it's automated so you actually sign on an iPad or a tablet but there's a lot to sign there's a lot to go through and there's just a lot of paperwork so we went ahead and we signed everything and then what was next we have to wait for our debit cards to be mailed to us we had a really good experience with Millennium. Like Josh said, Santander didn't really seem to know what we were talking about, but Millennium did. So we would definitely recommend Millennium as a bank if you're a foreigner. Before leaving the bank, the final thing we had to do was give 250 euros cash to go into the bank account. So we already have money in that bank account. And we can actually go to an ATM with certain numbers that we have and get that cash out, even though we don't have our debit cards just yet. We're waiting for those to come in the mail. The other thing they helped us set up is the online banking. So we went ahead and we set up those accounts and we have the app on our phone so it's quite easy if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button and click this playlist here about moving to Portugal to make your life easier on getting to Portugal now let's get moving